everyone and welcome. It looks like we have a nice crowd here and a number of people that I'm not real familiar with, so welcome. Glad to see you. Um, a Protect Geauga Parks is very happy to host this conservation conversation with renowned photographer Linda Butler. I'm sure as all of you know, Protect Geauga Parks is a group that was formed um, specifically for the conservation and protection of land within our parks. Um, as part of that, we want to help, we promote these conservation conversations to, uh, to help everybody see the value in conservation. So um, in this case, we're going to a more artistic feel for that. Um, most of Linda Butler's real, recent work focuses on environmental themes. Through these photographs, Linda hopes to inspire people to protect this gem of a lake that's on our doorstep. Linda demonstrates her um, conservation focus in other ways too, in her support for the um, Ohio Environmental Council and the fact that she and her husband Steve Neeson um, live in a passive solar home that uses almost zero gra uh, energy, not gravity, energy. Um, <laughs> um, these beautiful photographs uh, tell the story of one woman's journey to express the beauty, majesty, majesty, and fragility of our own Lake Erie. Um, this presentation can prove the old adage that a picture is worth, worth a thousand words. And here in Geauga County, we are linked to the fate of Lake Erie in so many ways. Decisions we make here in the headwaters that flow to Lake Erie have ramifications that affect the health and vitality of the whole lake. We are truly lucky to have Linda Butler here tonight. Linda has had 30 one-person museum ex exhibitions over the last 33 years. She has four, had four books of her, published of her photographs, and um, in order to complete this exhibition, uh, Linda circumnavigated Lake Erie uh, several times, and she flew in small planes uh, to take aerial photographs, and Currently, this exhibit is traveling to various museums throughout the next couple of years. So please join me in welcoming Linda Butler. So I'm, I was happy to come talk. I didn't want an honorarium because I wanted it to go into the programs that you're doing. 
Um, so I, we moved to um, Cleveland about 28 years ago and lived in um, Gates Mills, sort of actually it was Mayfield Village for a while. And I was involved with trying to protect a little wet, wetland there. And Progressive um, wanted to expand um, their building somehow. And they got approval to expand, but it was going to be remediated and everything was going to be fine with the wetland. And um, it had been a high quality wetland, so there were, um, you know, amphibians and the pools and stuff like that. As soon as the remediation was done and we started looking at the old pools, there were no more um, amphibians in the pools. And the, the beavers became more active and all sorts of invasives came in. And the trees began dying out because they had more sun than they had before. All of these unexpected consequences from what seemed like a relatively minor, um, you know, change. And that made me really realize how important keeping things as they are in a wetland, for instance, how important that is. You know, small changes make a huge difference and big changes make an even huger difference, obviously. And um, the lake has experienced some, you know, major changes over the years, and it has not been able to recover. Um, so I got involved with Lake Erie um, at about the time of the crisis that occurred in Toledo when uh, they had to shut off the water because um, their water system had become invaded by microcystine, which is poisonous algae. And I think they, they shut down their water for about three days. And in that period of time, um, the Ohio Environmental Council called a, a press conference out in that area near Sandusky. And um, so those of us who went to it um, got to go out into the lake on a boat and see what the algae actually looked like. Now this is what the algae looked like in 2014 from a NASA satellite, which is ugh, pretty scary. Um, could you move to the next? This is what the algae looked like off the edge of the boat, um, which is also pretty unappealing. <laughs> um, and um, eventually, you know, rains came that weren't um, as harsh as whatever had caused this originally. And things settled down a little bit, but um, I, I got caught in, go ahead. Um, trying to figure out really what was happening uh, that was creating these problems. Um, the, I've read a book, by the way, called The Death and Life of Lake Erie, or The Great Lakes. I don't know if you, um, any of you have read that book. It's a fabulous book. And um, obviously, it gets into the problems of um, fertilizers and so on and so forth that are going into our lake. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to meet a farmer out there and see what he was doing. And so um, I had I, I had a drone um, that my husband helped me operate. And uh, we went out to look at what his field looked like before it was planted. And he, where these white stripes are is where he, they have buried um, pipes that take the water off the land. Um, and um, so it gives an indication of how 
wet things are in the other areas. And he was, the farmer was very careful not to allow me to even walk in the fields because they were still too compressible. They, uh, um, so, but I, he, this kind of made me appreciate how wet this area had been. Next slide. Um, here he's, you know, gone the next step and he's uh, getting prepared to